Hi everyone, welcome to Europedia. This is Chandrasekhar, Faculty of Electrical and Electronics Engineering at Europedia. This video is about uh, previously asked interview questions at DRDO interview for a uh, branch of electrical engineering. So we take in the questions, we take in the feedback from the students who attended the DRDO interview in the previous years. And uh, these are the questions that were asked previously in the DRDO interview uh, from the subject power systems uh, for the students who attended uh, uh, DRDO interview in the branch of electrical engineering. See, the very important subjects for DRDO uh, interview preparation in the branch of electrical engineering are electrical machines, power systems, power electronics and electrical measurements. Apart from these subjects, having the idea of uh, other subjects like network analysis and uh, control systems, uh, analog electronics and uh, digital electronics, these are also important. But the very important core subjects for electrical engineering are electrical machines, power systems, power electronics and electrical measurements. Right? Let's uh, enter into the power system asked questions in previous DRDO interview. So the first question that was asked is, uh, instead of using AC transmission, why we are going for uh, HVDC? Yeah, see, we generate AC, we use AC, but uh, we are going for HVDC transmission in some cases. What is the reason for going for HVDC transmission? See, most of the people uh, will answer like this, sir, we are going for HVDC transmission to reduce the losses. That is one of the reason, but that is not the main reason. The main reason to go for HVDC is power system stability. If you are going with the AC power transmission, there is a concept of power system stability where uh, uh, in power system stability, as the length of the transmission is increasing, then uh, the reactance is going to increase, then maximum power transfer capability will decre decrease. Therefore, we have to increase or the machine will increase delta, load angle delta, okay uh, to send the same amount of power therefore stability is going to decrease so there is a relationship between load angle delta and stability if more is the delta less is the stability right approximately the delta should be less than 90 for a system to be stable or for the power system network or synchronous generator to be stable right the main reason why we are going for HVDC is uh, apart from HVAC is uh, to have very good power system stability or HVAC is having the, the stability uh, problem but HVDC is not going to have that. Now as we are going for DC then added advantage what we are getting are uh, power loss especially there is no skin effect power loss. Skin effect is going to exist only if frequency is there, but in HVDC frequency is zero, skin effect power loss is zero. And corona power loss is going to reduce and there will, there will be no radio interference with communication lines. These are advantages. But uh, don't depend upon only these things. Why? Because if if uh, you are talking about only power loss, uh, when, you, when you are converting from AC to DC, you need a converting station. Yes, AC to DC. Again, you have to convert that DC to AC. Again, you have you need to have one more converting station. Sending inside one converting station, receiving inside another converting station. Then you are going to have converting station power loss also. Converting station power loss also. So, not uh, the only power loss is the reason why we are going from HVAC to HVDC. The main reason is power system stability, right? So, this way, see, I explained the first question very clearly how you have to think to give you the idea. So, briefly, I will be discussing about uh, each thing, right? I am not going in detail, just uh, what type of question will be asked and uh, in what way you have to answer. Exact the concept and all, I, I am not discussing here. These are the questions I am discussing, right? What is the main advantage and disadvantage of HVDC? Almost the first question and second question are same. See, these are the questions previously really asked questions at a DRDO interview, right? So, what is the HRC fuse? What is HRC fuse? High rupturing capacity fuse. High rupturing capacity fuse. So where uh, the current is very high, the, at that place has uh, to withstand a good amount of current, we are going to use this uh, HRC fuse. What, the, what do you mean by? Yes, next question is, uh, what do you mean by MCB, miniature circuit breaker, how it works and which type of CB it is? See, uh, at houses you will find MCB where it is going to trip automatically if the current increases. Means if the current is more than the current what it has to flow, uh, immediately it will trip. Immediately it will trip. That is MCB, miniature circuit breaker, right? And the difference between normal circuit breaker and MCB is CB, uh, the circuit breaker what you are using at for high voltages or high power for high currents in the power system are uh, auto reclose means uh, that you can uh, see that the closing can be done and opening also can be done with the uh, uh, remote means at from remote places but uh, MCB we have to manually close it once it uh, breaks right 
next what is what is the constructional and operational difference between bldc motor and dc motor yeah bldc is a brushless dc motor see it takes some good amount of time to understand about bldc motor okay so how without brushes the commutation is happening so these kind of questions can be expected from this area bldc motor brushless dc motor and dc motor right uh, the next question is what is the purpose of commutator in dc machine see commutator is going to convert ac to dc dc to ac suppose uh, the, the, see i i'll i'll tell you this way uh, if it is dc generator uh, whether it is dc generator or ac generator uh, that emf that is induced inside of the winding will be ac in generator we want to convert that ac to dc that's why we are using commutator means in generator uh, the commutator is converting from ac to dc in motor if we are giving dc supply we want to convert that one from dc to ac therefore co convert uh, this commutator is doing the reverse operation right next uh, how can we get the supply for fans and lights in trains yeah see fans and lights lights in trains are having different voltage 120 volts it's not uh, 220 volts as uh, our uh, household power supply but because uh, the main reason is, uh, is suppose if some theft happens uh, fans or lights uh, someone is going to theft by because it's not pro it is not possible to protect the entire railway trains and all therefore if someone thefts that is not going to be useful for them why because uh, the voltage uh, at our household uh, equipment is uh, 220 volts but there it is uh, to, uh, 120 volts only then the question is how we can get from where we are getting the power supply so now or uh, these days are uh, most of the locomotives are uh, electric locomotives olden days uh, diesel locomotives even now also there are some diesel locomotives so from the power see from the power supply to the train itself we are taking it there are a lot of converters that that is a uh, big schemat means what it is happening how uh, the power see how power uh, real, uh, how railways is receiving power okay at what voltage whether they are getting ac or dc then we are converting that ac or dc which motor you are using so all these things we have to discuss if you want to answer this question next question uh, two bulbs of 100 watts and 40 watts are respectively are connected across at 230 volt supply which bulb will go glow bright and why see this is very simple if you want to tell which bulb is going, going to glow brighter you need the resistance both are connected in series this is bulb one this is bulb two both are carrying same current both are carrying same current okay two bulbs of 100 watts and 40 watts respectively are connected in series across 230 volts in series this is 230 this is 230 volts if you connect both in series the current is going to be same this is r1 this is r2 tell me which bulb is going to have more resistance that is going to glow uh, brighter why because what is this power this power of the bulb one is equal to i square into r1 the power of bulb 2 is equal to i square into r2 if you see carefully if you see carefully i is same if r1 is greater than r2 this will go if this will glow better if r2 is greater than r1 this is going to glow better right brighter yes now see the resistance see the resistance how to get the resistance see power is equal to v square by r so from this one r is equal to v square 230 all square by p is 100 so this is the first bulb resistance second bulb resistance is also in the same way that is 230 whole square by 40 watts this is watts 40 watts you see r2 is greater than r1 in fact r2 is greater than r1 in fact therefore why uh, because numerator the denominator is less in the second case first case denominator is more therefore r2 is greater than r1 therefore i can say pb2 is greater than pb1 therefore the second bulb of this 40 watt bulb is going to glow brighter when compared to the first bulb this way you have to understand this question this is a famous uh, uh, gate and uh, uh, engineering service examination question number of times it was asked right yeah let's go for the next question see it's not possible uh, to discuss complete in details of each and everything here okay this is uh, uh, this video is about to give you the idea how to prepare uh, uh, which questions will come for the drdo entry and how to prepare okay if you want more concepts in the last i will give you the uh, contact number of mine you can contact me we can discuss the concept right uh, next question is what is ferranti effect this is a very well known effect for everyone but uh, see most of you will tell the answer correct answer only but they will ask you to draw uh, uh, i can say phasor diagram of ferranti effect prove the phasor diagram with help of phasor prove the ferranti effect with help of phasor diagram what is ferranti effect 
under no load or light load conditions the receiving end voltage is going to be more than sending end voltage that effect is called as ferent effect under no load or light load conditions okay what are the advantages of ac sr conductors yes uh, 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 I can say we have uh, aluminum conductor with steel reinforced. What are the advantages? Skin effect will be less and it is very easy to transport the current. The main problem with solid conductor is uh, it is not possible to transport. Uh, but uh, with uh, if you are going with standard conductors, transportation is easy. But uh, in standard conductors, uh, skin, act, skin effect is high. Therefore, we are going for uh, uh, standard conductor. In solid conductor, skin effect is high. Therefore, we are going for standard conductor. But uh, the mechanical strength of standard conductor is low. Therefore, some strands, in fact, uh, the internal strands of the aluminum aluminum conductor we are replacing with the steel to have good mechanical strength right so acsr conductor is uh, having less uh, skin effect and uh, more mechanical strength less skin effect compared to solid conductor and more uh, mechanical strength uh, compared to standard conductor okay less uh, skin effect compared to solid more mechanical strength when compared to all, all aluminum right uh, with the uses of steel its mechanical strength is going to increase next uh, what are the advantages of HVDC over HVAC? This question, see, uh, repeatedly came, okay, the same question it is. What is neutral grounding? What is neutral grounding? They will ask the question like, what is the difference between neutral earth and ground? See, if there is a three-phase machine like transformer or generator or uh, I can, uh, generator or transformer or any other three-phase machine, if it is star connected, it is going to have neutral. That neutral, if you are connecting to the ground, that is called as earthing or neutral grounding. But we should not call it as earthing. It is, it is called as neutral grounding, okay? Earthing is going to be a different word. I'll tell you what is earthing. Neutral is connected to ground. There are several methods of neutral grounding like resistance grounding, reactance grounding, Peterson coil grounding, right? But the purpose of neutral grounding is to provide a closed path for the flow of fault current. That is one purpose. Another purpose is not to have a floating neutral, not to have a floating neutral. Then what is earthing, sir? See, for the operator's safety, if the body of the equipment is connected to ground or earth, that is called as earthing. Neutral grounding and earthing both are not same, please. Okay, what are the different methods? What are the what are the different methods of neutral grounding is the question. Next, what is the grounding used for synchronous generator? For synchronous generator, resistance grounding is used to improve stability, power system stability. Again, this is a very good question. Uh, this is a very good question for synchronous uh, uh, generator, which grounding is used. Right. Next, uh, why resistance is grounding is preferred for synchronous generator to improve power system stability. Next, uh, why reactance grounding is used for synchronous motor? Actually, for synchronous motors, reactance grounding is used uh, because uh, uh, synchronous motors mostly operated at overexcited condition. If it is overexcited, there will be excess amount of reactive power. To draw that excess amount of reactive power, we are going to keep some inductor that uh, from that is connected from neutral to ground. Uh, that is called as uh, reactance grounding. Right. The next question is. The next question is what is the difference between overcurrent and overload protection yes overcurrent from overload see overcurrent means when fault occurs that is overcurrent overcurrent relay we are going to put when fault occurs overload is not like that it's not the faulty case it's the overload case overload and overcurrent both are different okay then uh, what kind of protection schemes we have to take up next uh, explain by drawing the graphs of instantaneous overcurrent relay different uh, time overcurrent relay inverse time overcurrent relay very inverse relay and extremely inverse relay See, based on the time of operation, these are the relays, DMT, definite minimum time, IDMT, inverse definite minimum time, inverse relay. See, all of these comes under inverse relay, very inverse relay, extremely inverse relay. So draw these graphs and explain. So you have to draw those graphs and explain, right? Next, next. What is the restricted earth fault protection and how it is going to be, how it is calculated? Yes, sir. See, uh, you must be uh, very good at power system protection. Power system protection, especially, I can say, differential protection, earth fault, restricted earth fault protection, earth fault protection, current transformer, and uh, uh, PSM, plug setting multiplier, TMS, time multiplier setting, and current setting. Okay. So, uh, on these things, you must have very good idea. Next, uh, what is universal uh, torque equation of relay? Yeah. See, uh, there is a relay, there is an equation called universal torque equation from which uh, you can uh, derive any relay torque uh, equation. Questions can be asked on that equation. Next, uh, how does a circuit breaker operate? Yes. 
circuit breaker operate what is an arc yeah when circuit breaker contacts are opening arc may arc will form so what is that arc why it is formed what is the reason for the formation of the arc and after the contacts opening arc is continuing what is the reason for the continuation of the arc that kind of questions also can be asked and these are the and what is the difference between spark and arc yeah arc is the continuous one spark will come and on its own it is going to uh, disappear okay arc in circuit breaker is going to form until and unless you are going to quench the arc you are going to extinguish the arc it is going to continue right how do you quench the arc there are several methods for quenching arc depend on the type of the circuit breaker you take okay why we try to extinguish the arc at current zero point yes always we try to uh, uh, extinguish the arc at current zero point why uh, why it is why because at current zero point the heat energy that is uh, there in the medium is going to be less why because i square r i is going to be zero right next uh, how can we improve the transient stability of a system yes uh, i as i told you power system stability is important we have two types of stabilities transient stability and steady state stability the question is about transient stability how to improve the transient stability one i told you by by resistance grounding by resistance grounding or by initially itself if you are, if you are operating far away from 90 degrees far below from not away far below from 90 degrees then power system sensibility is more and then there are there are several methods by using a flywheel by using flywheel by flywheel by using fast acting circuit breakers right by using three pole circuit breaker right so there are many methods there are many methods right how can how do we can increase the stability of a system when circuit breaker operates yeah by using fast operating circuit breakers what are auto reclose type circuit breakers yes auto reclose circuit breakers then uh, how are the duty cycle mentioned in a circuit breaker yeah see on the circuit see it is very important to have the idea of uh, circuit breaker nameplate details okay on circuit breaker voltage rating power rating uh, okay and the number of units of operation so there are many things are mentioned uh, having the idea of those things is also very important then how much time does it usually takes for a circuit breaker to break the circuit yes so that uh, depends that depends on the circuit breaker what you are taking and uh, where you are going to install it where you are going to install it so suppose if it is it, it see the time should be less but it is not too less if it is too less even uh, for unnecessary i can say sometimes a relay is going to give trip signal to circuit breaker yes it has to open fastly it has to open fastly but uh, it won't be too less it it should be a less time but it is not too less uh, see generally that depends on the type of circuit breaker and where you are installing it right yeah so this way the questions will be asked on the subject power systems uh, for your DRDO interview preparation. These questions are exclusively for DRDO interview preparation, right? If you have any questions, you can contact to this number that is 891-999705, okay? Uh, if you have any assistance for your interview preparation regarding DRDO, you can contact to this number. Thank you.